Hello there, Coast Buster fans. I'm going to make a video. Normally you have a self-help video that shows you how to fix things. This one, I'm asking for help. And I have a... It's right here. It's a Kawasaki 2002. It's a ZXI 1100. And it has no spark. All right, now, originally when I was given this ski, I did tests on the stator and found that we had a bad stator. You didn't get the right resistance readings. And after taking it apart, you can see that coil and that coil got hit by something. It doesn't look anything like the other ones. See, they're all in good shape. These just happen to be the exciter coils that throw the voltage to the CDI unit to make the spark. Alright, so what I did was I went on eBay and I found a new one which is installed right now in the ski. I actually pulled the engine out of this because what we found was there was a lot of garbage in the rotor which is the flywheel and there were parts and pieces and there was oil inside of the magneto cover so something happened so what I did was I pulled the engine out and took the uh, oil pan off the bottom of the engine and it turns out the seal that was behind the flywheel destructed and there's metal pieces in the seal that hold it together they got into where the rotor and the stator are somehow got between the rotor and the stator and when the rotor went by it, it scraped these windings on the magneto so that's why I had to pull the engine because we had to replace the seals so that is all done now and I said great when we put this back together because this thing was running 10 years and then all of a sudden that happened and it stopped running and so I'm at the point where I'm taking voltage readings because I'm not getting any spark down here so I'm taking all the voltage readings and the ohm readings of the new stator all right and we'll show you how that goes all right this is the actual electrical diagram for this unit I'm not going to, you know, it's too small to be able to read, so what I did was I made all the readings here, and this is out of the shop manual. On the exciter coil, there's a purple-red and a yellow-black, which have to have tests, and they're supposed to be between 348.8 and 523.2 for the purple-red, and 21.6 to 32.4 for the yellow-black. These are the actual readings I got. 423, so that's within range, and 25.9, that's within range. Also, the voltages that we put out on the purple red is 40 volts. The yellow black, 2.9 volts. This is AC now. And on the green blue, which is the pulse coil, I'm getting 1.123 volts AC. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is this is the wires coming from the stator. Is the purple and red, the blue and green, and the yellow. The blue and green is the pulsar coil, the red and purple are the exciter coil, and I don't need, there's another coil, the yellow black, I don't even know what that does. But anyway, they're taking the resistance reading on the ignition coil, the exciter coil, is 423 ohms, which it's supposed to be. 348 to 532, and I got 423. Okay, we'll do the other test. We'll do the yellow and black. Okay, so that worked out good. The next one, we're going to do the yellow and black wire. That's the coil. I don't know really what it does. Maybe somebody could tell me. All right, so we're going to set the meter to 200 ohms. We're supposed to get a reading on the yellow and black between 21.6 and 32.4 ohms. I got a reading of 25.9 actual reading. So we'll see how that goes. And that's 26.7. The ground is actually the black and the yellow is connected in the connector that comes from the stair in the front. So we got 26.7 
supposed to be 21.6 to 32.4 so that's well within range all right so next we're going to do the voltage readings because i already have the yellow and black hooked up so we'll just do the voltage readings on that and then we'll go back to the purple and red all right to do that we'll crank it over highest one was 2.3 2.3 before I read 2.9 but 2.3 is basically what we're getting out of the yellow and black and by the way you have to set the meter to 200 volts AC we're measuring all AC voltage here all right so next I switch the connections over to the red and the purple wire and we'll crank the engine see what it gets highest one was 42 and I actually wrote 40 on there uh, without a peak voltmeter you're going to get different readings but basically that's what it is 40 volts alright the next one we're going to do I'm going to take the voltage readings on the green and blue which is the pulse coil I have no clue and in the specs it doesn't tell you what the voltage is supposed to be it just gives you the ohmage so we're going to do a test on the pulse coil. I've watched so many videos and some of them come between 0.3 volts all the way up to 4 to 5 volts. So let's see what we're getting. I took the reading before and I was getting 1.123 volts AC. So we'll crank the engine again. And I'm getting 0.3 volts again. Which one of the videos said that's what you're supposed to get. Alright, now I have, I'm going to do a resistance test on the pulse coil. I have the green and blue hooked up to the ohm meter. I have it set on the 2000 volt scale, the 2000 ohm scale, and I'm reading 488 volts. From what I understand, this is supposed to be a 450 ohm coil. Okay, I have an old one from the old unit. We can test that too. Alright, so I have the, the meter hooked up, the old meter hooked up to the old pulse coil, which was probably still good, and I'm getting a reading of 492 ohms. So, I have to check the specs and see what it's supposed to be. Alright, here's the spec for that pickup coil, which is right there, pickup coil resistance. Supposed to be 396 to 584. So we are well within range with that pulse coil. Right, the only thing that was a little disturbing to me was I thought the pulse coil was supposed to... Oh, hold on a minute. The only thing that was a little disturbing to me was I thought that one of these wires with basically the green that goes to the pulsar coil was supposed to be also ground. And I'm not getting any reading between the frame and the green wire or the frame and the blue wire which also inside the bike on the new stator that's why it's reading no ground connection there all right so anyway we have all these voltage readings and we have all these resistance readings the resistance readings all seem to be good now this CDI box the igniter is, I have two of them, the, the guy who gave me this had two. One was working when the bike blew up and the stator, you know, self-destructed. So the thing was running and using that CD uh, igniter, CDI igniter. So I already changed, put a different one in there, and they're both doing the same thing. No spark. All right. Occasionally, while doing this, I will get a weak spark for a moment coming out of one of the wires. But it's very weak, you barely see it, and it's not enough to uh, fire a spark plug. So we're going to do a, a test right now. Everything's hooked up. It should work. If I crank it over, I should be able to get a spark here. 
and a mat. So let's do that test. I have a spark tester. One side is connected to the engine frame and the other one is going to the spark plug wire. Let's crank it over. You see no spark. Right, now I've done my tests on all my grounds. I have good grounds to the CDI box at the enclosure that it's in. I have good grounds to the engine coming from the battery negative and everything is testing good on the grounds. There's one central ground point in the back here which is right down in there. That bolt holds three different grounds down. One to the CDI box, one coming from the stator, and one coming from the battery. Which is, this is the negative battery cable side right into the side of the engine with a little wire that comes off it also and that goes into the box and all those grounds are tied together. So I can't understand why I'm not getting a spark. I hate to think that there's two bad CDI boxes. It just doesn't make sense. I mean these things basically run forever. Uh, but two bad ones? And they're like four, four to five hundred dollars, even used, on eBay. So I'm a little reluctant to go buy one, put it in and have the same condition happen. If anybody out there knows what's going on, like a Kawasaki jet ski mechanic, please leave a comment and you'd really help me out. Okay, thanks, bye. All right, one question I'm always asked while I'm working on this is, how about the kill wire, which is connected to your stop switch here? Uh, so, in the, the box here that you have the white plug, and in it are a black and a white wire, which if you were to look on the electrical diagram, that goes to the kill switch. So I have my leads connected to it. I'm getting no ohms, so no continuity, unless I press this red button. And there it is. So I'm assuming, well actually I'm not assuming because I did the test that the kill switch is not connected and grounding the system out which would give you a no spark condition. Okay. Another bit of information for anybody that has one of these skis this doesn't pertain to all skis but this particular one a lot of people will tell you you have to pull the engine to get the stator cover off which is not true. It's a pain in the ass but with quarter inch drives number 10 socket and you can't use a one inch socket you have to use a three quarter inch long socket the one inch long one doesn't give you enough room to spin the ratchet in there it won't even fit on the bolt but if you use a three quarter inch socket and a small quarter inch ratchet you can get in there and get all the bolts out a couple of places you might have to use a wrench because there's no room to swing the ratchet but it is possible and it will pop off and you have to loosen the wire in the back here so you have slack and you'll be able to pull that right up and set it on top of the valve cover. Okay, point of information. I had to pull the engine anyway because of what I said. The oil seal behind the rotor self-destructed so the engine had to come out. But originally all I wanted to do was pull the stator out because I knew that was bad from testing the ohms. And once I got that out we found all the debris inside of the case. That's, in fact, that's the case. There was oil in there and everything. There's not supposed to be anything in there. So that's why I had to pull the engine. Also, the on the front of your rotor cover, I mean your uh, your magneto cover is a plate which looks like and it looks like this. That sits right on the front of this magneto cover. sits on here and these two bibs, hose bibs, let water circulate from the cooling system through this to cool the stator. Okay, you have your oil pump mounted on here. What we did was the previous owner went to straight gas oil mix. 
worked. He put little stickers to remind people because the pump, they fail and you'll blow your cylinders and then the engine ship. So anyway, after taking the old one apart, I noticed this, whoever owned it probably did not flush the machine after every use. This is all salt. Water couldn't have even gotten through there. There's so much of it built up in there. All right. So that could have possibly made the seal go bad from heat. Wasn't getting enough water to cool. And the new one came, and it must have come from probably the Great Lakes because there was no salt at all in it. It was clean as a whistle. So flush your ski, especially if you live near salt water. This will wreck your boat, your, your jet ski. By the way, one thing we didn't test, which I have tested myself and it's fine, is the charging coil. The, uh, the igniter coil is separate in here. The two that went bad, those are the igniter coils. They're actually bigger than the other ones. But all the rest of these are the charging coils. They, uh, they come up on the two brown wires and the black. Black being ground, two browns are the AC. And I'm getting the right voltage there. They go right into the rectifier, and out of the rectifier, you get 12 volts coming out of it. It's 50 volts coming up AC, and the rectifier reduces it down to 12 volts, which powers all of the lights and the gauges and charges the battery. So it has nothing to do, as far as I know, with the ignition system. This is an AC powered CDI unit, not a DC powered one. There's no DC connections at all that I can see. If you know any different, let me know.